and the cost of combat in Iraq. Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Josh Frydenberg, is with me on the program today, as is the Shadow Parliamentary Secretary to the Opposition Leader, Jim Chalmers. First to you, Josh Frydenberg, good morning. Is the Prime Minister still committed to this paid parental leave scheme? Oh, absolutely, David. Uh, the paid parental leave scheme is a policy that's been endorsed by the Australian people at two uh, successive elections. Uh, it's about putting in a fair dinkum scheme that will get more women into the workforce and keep more women in the workforce. You see, Labor's uh, paid parental leave scheme at 18 weeks of minimum wage is well below international standards. In fact, the World Health Organization says a mother needs at least six months to bond with their child. And we want to put paid parental leave on the same level, the same platform as annual leave or long service leave. Make it a workplace entitlement. That's why we're committed to it. So, Josh, is it legitimate then for your colleagues to claim the cost of combat in Iraq, in part, they're pointing to other international factors as well, but to claim that cost uh, in their case against the paid parental leave scheme? Well, look, there's no choice between financial security and national security, as the Treasurer has rightly pointed out and the Prime Minister has also made the point. Um, we will do everything possible to protect the nation. And if that means sending our Air Force and our troops overseas, if that means an additional $600 million for our law enforcement and intelligence agencies here at home, we will do that. Uh, we will also find the necessary savings to ensure that we bring some responsibility back to the uh, budget management process. Well, Joe Hockey this morning was also pressuring Labor to support any national security related offsets that may appear in my EFO in December to pay for the combat in Iraq and also the boost to intelligence agencies back home. Here's Joe Hockey. It's another good reason for Mr Shorten to immediately pass the remaining measures in the budget. Everything comes at a cost uh, and if uh, Bill Shorten truly is honest about uh, his commitment uh, to deliver bipartisan support in relation to our defence efforts in the Middle East, he'll provide bipartisan support to pay for it. Uh, Jim Chalmers, uh, can Labor guarantee it will support any offsets if it's to pay for combat in Iraq? Well, two points about that, David. The first point is about paid parental leave. For as long as that remains in the budget, it will be a symbol of the unfairness of this budget at the same time as they want to whack pensioners, charge people to go to the doctor and uh, create $100,000 degrees. They've got a system that gives $50,000 to the wealthiest mums in our community just to have a baby. That's the first point. The point that Joe Hockey was making, even by Joe Hockey's typically low standards, that is a new low. To try and say that the only way for us to meet our international obligations is to sign off on the unfairness in his budget, the pension cuts, the GP tax, the $100,000 degrees, is particularly dishonourable even by his low standards to try and pretend that the only Jim, way that we can do our Jim, job... I'm just going to have to butt in there. I, I will come back to you and let you finish this point. But promise. We've made the promise two elections running. The Prime Minister Tony Abbott speaking live on 3AW Radio to Neil Mitchell in Melbourne. We will continue monitoring that here at Sky News in Canberra and bring you any further highlights. I did just want to get some views from our panel before we run out of time. Jim Chalmers, you were speaking just on this issue that Tony Abbott has just reiterated he's still committed to, the paid parental leave scheme. Yeah, he's still committed to the paid parental leave scheme. He's still committed to all of the harsh cuts. Uh, in the budget. But the fascinating thing about that interview, David, I thought was that his refusal to back in Joe Hockey's comments overnight, that low act that Joe Hockey uh, uh, said overnight where he said that uh, to meet our international obligations we need to pass all these unfair pension cuts and GP taxes in his budget. That is not the right way to go. There are other ways uh, to uh, achieve uh, budget repair. And I thought it was fascinating that the Prime Minister then was given multiple opportunities to back in Joe Hockey's comments and wouldn't do it. Uh, but yes, they are still, rem still committed to all the uh, things in the budget that make it so, fair, all, uh, so unfair, all the things in the budget that people are lining up in my community and around the country to oppose.
But do you agree just briefly uh, with the question that was put to Tony Abbott and the question I put to you as well before we w went to that interview that Labor has a responsibility to back the government in any savings offsets that it announces to pay for combat in Iraq? No, I think, David, the best way to think about budgets are that they are about choices. If you were serious about finding money in the budget, you wouldn't be doing the paid parental leave scheme. Uh, you wouldn't be opening, reopening loopholes for multinational companies to uh, avoid tax. You wouldn't be giving tax breaks to the wealthiest people in the superannuation system. Budgets are about choices. We wouldn't do those things. That's our alternative. Uh, the government wants to go down the path of cutting pensions, imposing GP taxes and having $100,000 university degrees that, pay, uh, that price some of our uh, young kids out of the market. Budgets are about choices. It's wrong to suggest uh, that this is the only way to go about repairing the budget or to pay for our international commitments. There are fairer ways to go about it and we've been talking about them for some time. Can I just say, David... I'll get you to uh, respond we, to that, Josh. Go for it. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't be taking any budget advice uh, from Jim Chalmers because he was uh, Wayne Swan's right-hand man when the last government sent uh, $900 checks to 21,000 dead people when they shouldered every Australian man, woman and child with $25,000 of debt. When we've got an interest bill at $1 billion a month climbing to $3 billion a month. You see, Jim Chalmers and Wayne Swan, they promised a budget surplus 600 times but never ever delivered one. We will and people know that that's what we're committed to. So Jim has obviously got amnesia when it comes to budget history and budget management and we're actually trying to fix Labor's mess. If we had the balance sheet that we left uh, the uh, last Labor government when John Howard left office in 2007, we wouldn't even be having this debate. But we're having this debate, David, because of the Labor's fiscal mess and we will always stand up for people's national security at the same time okay, we'll I... bring fiscal security as well. You better give I me a chance to respond you both very about briefly, the David. Issue, I, I, I do want to ask you both about the issue of uh, terrorist advocacy because the Prime mm. Minister, again, uh, pointing to that as part of that interview, these coming laws, uh, this is going to become a, a crime to advocate terrorism. And the, the example that uh, Tony Abbott used was uh, what he described as the relatively mild piece by Andrew Bolt. He said if he was prosecuted, it's infinitely more objectionable for groups like Hizbut Tahrir to be, in his words, preaching hate. Are these laws, though, going to be too broad? I mean, what is the definition, uh, Josh Frydenberg, first to you, of mm. uh, advocating terrorism? I mean, if we're protesting against Australian involvement in Iraq, does, does, is that advocating terrorism? Well, look, as the Prime Minister made the distinction in that interview between the current law, which makes engaging in terrorism an offence, and we're also going to introduce legislation which makes promotion of terrorism offence, and, and there the details and the interpretations of the law that will be, that we worked out in due course, obviously, in the preparation of the legislation. But the key point here is that three Australians have gone over to Syria and Iraq to become suicide bombers. We've had a major federal police raids across Brisbane, New South Wales and Victoria. On the advice of our intelligence agencies, we've raised the threat level here in Australia. This is a very, very serious issue and we do not want to be importing preachers of hate. We've seen the damage that they've done in countries like the United Kingdom, which had their own homegrown uh, terrorists uh, with the London bombings, and we do not want to see a repeat here in Australia. So we face a very real threat and it's our obligation as a government to try to mitigate that threat and one of the ways we can do that is stopping the importation of the preachers of hate and better coordination between our intelligence agencies and our immigration department to get more information about people who may want to come here and then incite that level of hatred is exactly what we will do. Uh, Jim Chalmers, any concerns on Labor's side? You've said you're broadly supportive of these laws, but uh, are there concerns? Oh, I found myself agreeing with a great deal of what the Prime Minister said until he got up to the point of describing Andrew Bolt as poor old Andrew Bolt. But apart from that, uh, there was a lot of sense in what he said. We do come at these issues from a position of bipartisanship. Uh, we, did, uh, we were very keen to see these new proposed laws examined by the Parliamentary Committee, which is appropriate to give people the opportunity to have their say about it. 
uh, and if they're implemented we want to make sure that there's the proper safeguards and proper oversight. But we do come to this from a constructive position, a position where we want to work with the government to make sure that we do have the right set of laws to ensure that people aren't uh, coming here to incite violence, to incite hatred uh, or to divide our community unnecessarily for the wrong reasons. Jim Chalmers, Josh Frydenberg, we are right out of time. Apologies to take a big chunk out of our panel discussion, but thank you very much for joining us. AM Agenda continues after this break.